Greetings and welcome to Geek Legion of Doom. I'm Lisa from the Lisa Loves channel and I'm here today to do a review for a new movie called Fanga. So Fanga is a movie that hails from Iceland. It is, however, an English language movie. And this movie is kind of a modern retelling of the story Beauty and the Beast with a little bit of a twist. So Fanga is written and directed by Max Gold. I'm going to have to refer to some papers to give you who's in this as my Icelandic name pronunciation leaves a lot to be desired, so apologies in advance. We star Andreas Schneidel, Inji Raffin Hilmerson, Gudmundur Thorvaldsson and Hanna Wagnerova. I apologise profusely with that pronunciation. Um, cinematographer also I want to put a special mention to, Nico Navia. Um, because this movie is absolutely beautiful to look at. We will get back to that. So what is the story of Fanga? Fanga is basically the story of Beauty and the Beast, of Belle, her father and the Beast, but we do have a slightly more believable, a more modern twist. It's obviously definitely not for children. It does have like a folk horror vibe to it, but most of all, this movie is stunning to look at. It's set in Iceland. The scenery, the backdrop, Every scene that you look at in this movie could be a painting. It is absolutely stunningly beautiful. So obviously we all know the traditional story of Beauty and the Beast. How is this, how is Fanga different? Um, we do follow a very similar path, but we do have um, a darker edge. We do have more layered characters. We have more believable characters. We don't have the, the fairy tale characters here. We do have fairy tale characters, but with a dark spin, with a believable edge. Um, in this, the main thing that stood out to me as being different from the story, I obviously don't want to tell you everything that happens, I don't want to spoil it, although we do have a, a pretty much the narrative laid down if you've seen Beauty and the Beast, but the main difference for me with this movie is the relationship that Belle has with her father. Um, Belle's mother has passed, she lives with her father, and her father very much relies on her for everything. He's chronically ill, she looks after him, um, he has certain sort of viewpoints desires for her, things he wants her to do. Um, he just, to me, wasn't a very likeable character and that was obviously completely purposeful. And in a way, it very much felt as if Belle was a prisoner of her father of what she needed to do for him. Her obligations would be a word I'd use, um, the obligations she had towards her father. There wasn't really anywhere for her to be her, to do what she wanted. Um, this, the title of this actual movie, Fanga, is an Icelandic derivative for the word prisoner, which very much describes Belle's situation all through this movie. So, as we know with Beauty and the Beast, she does at some stage become prisoner of the Beast. And in this case, the Beast has a magical rose and the petals of that rose could cure Belle's father. Um, obviously, this sense of, as I said before, obligation. She goes along with this and ends up with the beast. Now we know the rest of the story. I'm not going to go any further. So the beast in this movie, Inji Raffin Hilmerson, um, he very much he has the appearance of sort of a Viking look about him. He's got long hair, a beard. He's very pleasant to look at, it has to be said. Um, his performance though, taking that completely aside, is fantastic. We don't have him as a beast in the traditional sense where he transforms, where he looks like a beast. He is a man all the way through this movie, but Certain things make him flip in his characteristics, um, make him a monster as such, but without the physical, without the changes being physical ones. So it is a believable situation. I suppose it's kind of like a Jekyll and Hyde situation, but without a physical change. Belle, obviously, as we know from the story, does fall for the beast um, and she wants to try to, I suppose in her eyes, cure him. She wants to find out what triggers these changes. Can she save him? Can she help him? And that is the basic crux of the story. In the background, we have a character playing a, a sort of witch character, um, Hannah Wagnerova, who is fantastic. Really layered character. What I liked about this movie most is the characters aren't just bad or good. The characters have reasons for why they behave and why they act the way they do, why they've got into the position to be a bad person or make bad decisions or be evil. It's not just a case of the stereotypical fairy tale, you're the bad guy, you're the good guy. It's not that way at all. Every character here has layers, has different facets of their personality. Um, I feel it was a really nice portrayal. That's maybe a strange word because it is quite dark and it is a folk horror tale, but 
it is something I feel I felt quite it was quite romanticized it was nice to watch the love story was nice to watch the leads are both extremely beautiful individuals so I think anyone watching this is going to fall for that person and you know it does bring that extra sort of level of engagement to you if you see that character and you feel the way that their co-star feels as you're watching the movie. And as a woman watching The Beast and watching Belle, you really wanted her to get to the bottom of why these changes happened. You wanted her to be able to help him. Does she manage? You'll have to watch the movie to find out. So what do I feel worked about the movie? Um, Pretty much everything, I have to say. The, the casting was spot on. They were very believable. The acting performances were spot on. They really did nail the character attributes that they wanted to in watching this. The cinematography, guys, um, is something I've seen mentioned again and again about this movie, is how beautiful the cinematography is, but it is that gorgeous. Um, Iceland is such a stunning country. Um, every single scene, the way it's shot, it's not just that it is a beautiful place, obviously it is, but the way it's shot, the lighting especially, um, it's just like something out of a fairy tale book. It is beautiful. It's like a fairy tale for adults, I suppose, and I myself am a big fan of that kind of thing. Um, so fantastic acting, real, really good casting, cinematography is fantastic. It has a really specific sound design, um, especially the music. And I did actually read there's a specific scene in it and they wanted to kind of have a different kind of music than you would expect. They didn't want to fall to the usual expectation. Um, and someone that works on the movie is a fan of Prince and the song Little Red Corvette. The tempo of that song was actually inspirational in providing a piece of music that is in the movie. Um, and I did go back and see it again after I read that and I can definitely hear the inspiration. I love Prince myself. Um, so the music is really different. In some places, we have pieces of music made up with voices. Um, I did read Handmade Digital Instruments. Um, it really has a very specific feel that is just suits the movie it's spot on. And I love the fact it subverted expectations completely. You didn't get the type of music that you would expect, but the music that you got fit the scene and the mood that they wanted to convey fantastically well. So as you can see, I did enjoy the movie. The casting for me and the scenery were the two things, the performances that, that really did win me over in this. Is there anything I feel that didn't work about the movie? For me personally, no. Um, it did have a quite unusual ending, which won't be for everyone. Personally, for me, again, I love it when a movie doesn't go quite where I expected it to. And um, the the actress, um, Anna Vagnerova, that plays the witch at the end of this is um, fantastic. I loved her scenes at the end of this movie. Um, you just completely understood her as a character when perhaps before you didn't. At the end of the movie, you very much do. Um, so that for some people may be a little bit jarring, it may be unexpected and for some people they may find the, the pace of the movie a little slow but if you're someone that enjoys folk horror I think you will be used to the fact that is how folk horror is. Personally I love a building movie, I love getting to know a character, I love getting inside their personality, their psyche and in this you definitely do. So if you want to watch something with really good performances, beautiful scenery, you really get to know the characters that you're watching. You're immersed into their world um, and you don't mind a slower pace and you don't mind things maybe going not quite where you expected them to, then I would definitely suggest that you check out Fanga. I've just checked the release date for this one. I'm not sure if this is completely accurate. Um, IMDb has this listed as expected release of 1st of November, 2023. The production has finished on the movie, so it may be sooner than that. But um, let us know below in the comments if it sounds like something you would like to check out. Do you like folk horror? Let us know below in the comments and we look forward to speaking to you next time.